What's up, good people? We back. Back by popular demand, all my aspiring investors, my scaling investors, y'all been asking for us. You want me back out in the field, so you got me. All right, now, I need y'all to do something for me. Don't just let all this be in vain. You gotta actually take it and apply it. So here's the deal. Today, we have one of our 16 unit builders. As y'all can see, get a shot of this real quick. You see it look all boarded up, all of that. I know it look crazy. That's the intent, okay? Just some game for y'all. We gotta be conscious of where we at and what we doing. We in the inner city. If any of y'all investing in the inner city, then you just a psychology play. People see us over here working, but the building still look boarded up. What does that mean? It look like probably not a lot of progress going on, right? So no vandalisms, those type of things. So you safeguard yourself by keeping the place boarded up until you are ready to actually start renting it out. Okay, then at that point, you got people living here, so you should be less susceptible to all those other things, vandalism, et cetera. We got about 60% of the units done, right? We got tenants moving in soon, so I'm about to check on the progress. Uh, just for numbers sake, I think we bought this one for, I want to say 450, putting like 300,000 into it, and it'd be worth like 1.2. Eight two bedrooms, eight one bedrooms. The two should rent for thousand bucks a clip and the one should rent for somewhere between 850 and 950 give y'all some perspective okay y'all do the math i know y'all got your calculator so come on looking good in here man we got our electric baseboard heats everything painted i forget the kind of gray that we use but we just that's another thing when you start doing projects to scale and even if y'all flip it right Figure out a, like two or three color palettes that you like. Figure out about three different countertop choices that you like. Two different style cabinets and just rinse and repeat. Okay. It's going to make your projects move a lot faster. Take the guesswork out for the contractors. And at the end of the day, you want to run a production. This ain't DIY and HGTV. Like all that look good. But in real life, you want to simplify your processes as much as possible. Okay. So you will notice like the same theme and palette as we go through these projects. You'll also notice that in some cases, we'll keep, like if the tile is in good shape, right? This affordable housing is clean, is like, there's no reason to take this up, okay? So you will salvage what you can salvage inside of these type of projects as well. Um, we don't cut any corners, okay? Because just because people are less fortunate, they shouldn't live in squalor. The very same time, you gotta be sensitive to how much money you putting into these projects versus how much you get out, right? The, the investment has to garner some type of return on investment and ideally the one that you expect to make, okay? And so for that reason, you still gotta be sensitive to cost because some people come in and they over renovate a property, not understanding that they're not gonna get the yield or the profit margin out based on the amount of money that they put in, okay? So there is a point of diminishing returns in any investment and so you really got to understand what's the comps of the area, what what standard do you need to renovate things to so that you're not over improving and not getting that investment back out. Nice basic bathroom, new vanity. We're able to keep the the older, uh, what they call that, Powabo style tile. New closet doors. You know, everything just really straightforward, guys. Making sure you got good, you know, and, and again, let's come out here for a second. I want to just reference this point. Whatever, whatever you do in a renovation of any type, understand this. It's always, it's always function over finishes. People leave up goofy walls. Um, things aren't well laid out from a functionality perspective. They skip over replacing the HVAC. They skip over redoing the roof. They skip over updating the electrical. You always want to make sure that the functionality is solid and then focus on the finishes. If you do it the other way around, you put a lipstick on the pig. Top five functions I'm looking for in every project starts with the mechanicals. Okay, so that's your, your HVAC system, your electrical system, your plumbing system. Then I'm looking at the roofing system and the windows. Those are going to be your top five functionality that you need to target and then as a bonus right after that is flow so how are things framed and partitioned off inside the place to allow the area to flow you got to think about the end user and how functional it is for them 
and how does th how do things flow together within the project? Then at that point, you start looking at the finishes. Top five mistakes that people make with finishes are number one, doing things that are too taste specific to them. Okay, we should never finish a property based off of what we like. We should finish it based off of what the market likes. And you only figure that out going through the comps, the comparable properties. Secondly, they over improve on things that they're not going to get money out of. So there's a thing called intrinsic value. There's a thing called actual value. So actual value is bed bath count, adding square footage could be granted in certain markets, uh, could be quartz in certain markets, right? Could be the type of cabinet that you use, but more often than not, those things are ancillary. And so you want to make sure that the, the, the things that you're spending the money on aesthetically, that it's going to bring actual value and not, and not just intrinsic value because intrinsic value means the consumer comes in and they like what they see and it pulls on emotional heartstrings to make them want to make a move. But here's the problem. If you put $200,000 into a $100,000 property, when that appraisal come back, it's still going to be a $100,000 property. Regardless of how you felt about it, regardless of what 24 karat gold, gold knobs you put in the property, like no, nobody care. Okay. So that's another big mistake. Um, you know, overpaying for appliances. That's another big one right going out and, and overpaying for appliances you're not going to get that return on investment uh not not having uh continuity all throughout the property so like sometimes you'll have you know bronze door handles right then you'll go in the bathroom and you got brush nickel finish and then the, the kitchen faucet is is gold right so you want to bring everything together so that uh it's cohesive and and it's sound together and then lastly, poor execution. You got great material, but poor execution. You rather have basic material. If everybody just pay attention, right? Go over, go, go over to like a new home build. New home builders use dollar a square foot tile in a lot of the new homes that sell for three, four, five hundred thousand dollars. They just got great exit. Well, <laughs> they used to have great execution, but but the point is they just have better execution than they do it on rinse and repeat. Right. So they're using a lot of the same material that we use as flippers. It's just that it's new construction. So it's got more of a grand feel to it. My point is this focus on getting good basic material with great execution, not the other way around. I forget the unit. I think 12. OK. Um, which is on the end, right um, right here. That'll be in short order. Yeah. He'd be, yeah, you know, comfortable enough. But it, like you said, even if he had to use the facilities, you know, separate. But he it still come down. Right, yeah, right, yeah, right, but right, it should right. still be good enough for, you know, him to just maintain up there. It's not, you know, one that's quite just in case they got somebody that's ready to snatch, you know, these done units up. For sure, for sure. So just to let everybody in on the conversation we have, I, I don't want y'all to be out here confused, okay? If you investing in any inner city, and even sometimes in the suburbs, as you get to the finish stages and you put, starting to put the expensive stuff in the properties, you're gonna wanna put a house sitter in there. Yep, alarm is great, security cameras are awesome. They ain't nothing like having somebody physically present at the property. So right now we're just talking about uh, in a couple of days, we're about to move a house sitter over here because we're gonna have to pull down many of the boards and expose the building. And so we're gonna have a house sitter staying in one unit while we also filling in the other units. So I just want y'all to move correctly. I know it all sounds sexy, but it ain't nothing sexy about stuff coming up missing at your property and you having to file a claim if you can file one. So um, just make sure you're moving correctly. You want redundancy in your security process. For sure. And just having somebody, you know, a lot of times with a house sitter, it catches because they don't know what time that's right you may be here may that's not right. be here and it'll wants to because more than likely the things that's going to happen is going to be from your localized area that's that right everyone's watching the place no kind of know what the times is know everything know when the workers is gone um know what time you know before they get here for sure um but when it's a house sitter and then once they everybody see it and understand that somebody's staying there and then it like it you know it changes, yeah, it, it changes the whole it changed the game changed the game completely of your issues yeah you know and, just, and, and, and by the way when you get a house sitter make sure it's somebody that actually stay at the house that's important 
and especially at night. And I, I'm dead serious, y'all. It, it, like it's every every solution create another problem, right? So even with getting a a house sitter, you got to understand that it need to be somebody to understand what their assignment is. It's not stay at home during the day and then go party at night because that's when you need them there most. You should, you know what I mean? So I just want you, I just, I just want to let y'all into the mind of an investor because you got to be on defense just as much as you on offense. Do you communicate with your house sitter regularly or they just contact you with this problem? I, well, I personally prefer not to talk to my house sitter regularly, but somebody is though. No, somebody's having constant dialogue, whomever we got working in the field. But yeah, absolutely. At one point in time in my career, absolutely, I would talk to them uh, frequently. Okay. Hey, hey. Now with the world of text message, you don't even have to get on the phone as much as you, all, you if you don't want to, right? You just send them a note. Hey, everything okay? But but literally, we we've had house sitters in the past where they would go out and party on, right? And then the house get broken into. It's like, well, how did that happen? Well, I was at my girl house last night, but you can't stay here and be at your girl house if you house sitting. You know what I'm saying? That's like a pure violation of the job. It, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. You would think certain things yeah. is common sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I think the parameters, you know, you lay the parameters out kind of early. Not say that you can force somebody to do everything that you talked about, right? But you at least lay the expectations out, um, lay the parameters out, and let them know, you know, that what what they that what they're really there for. They're not just there because I mean, most of the times these house sitters are somebody that's kind of in a situation that may need a place to stay or something like that. So they might be looking at it like, well, I just got somewhere to lay my head. It's like, yeah, but at the, you know, you got a job to do at the same time. Exactly. Um, and then, you know, you want them to keep their footprint small because the the closer you get to being fittest or, be, or, or you are fittest, then you don't, a house sitter that's staying somewhere is still a person that's using that's the, right. the place. So they're, they're just by default putting some type of wear and tear on the place so you have to they they have to understand to keep their footprint small um you know and be and be kind of light so it's really about how center is about relationships as well because you may go through a couple of them before you find kind of the ones that are the most dependable that's a fact I mean, you know we've had houses with with cats yeah like with pets yeah i'm like man like yeah you barely got a place today now you got you know you bringing pets in the Bro, no. we, we, we had, we had, a, we had one, of, one of our students had a house sitter. He was selling this like $350,000 flip and my man had a whole house full of furniture. I'm talking about, I'm talking about a whole house, a 3,000 square foot. He, I'm like, right. so where's your house? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like how did this happen? So now he got attachment issues. It's like, bro, we didn't got an offer for 350. It's time that we got to get a U-Haul. You know, we got to move. Yeah. You know, so to your point, keeping that footprint small is important because you want them to be able to move at a moment's notice, not have to hem and haw and really fall into the facade of believing as they place. But you want them, you want them to protect it like it's theirs, but not, but not completely treat it like it's theirs. <laughs> right. It's like, but that presence is really what's most important. You know what I'm saying? It's everything, presence. bro. It's everything. You're alerting the community. Hey, somebody is here. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Because so, they don't know in what capacity. Exactly. They just think somebody living there. Like, there's somebody living over there, you know? So, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. And, and if, if they got habits, again, I'm not saying this ain't HR. Right. right. But you need to be mindful of that because you, you want somebody with a clear mind and that must be one of those watch that came out of that watch that I don't know they don't look Florida <laughs> wherever they are they ain't, they ain't familiar with Florida you know what I'm saying <laughs> uh, but yeah you want to make sure they don't have bad habits because the worst stuff right they in there drunk passed out they, they ain't doing you no good you know so you, it, it's some qualifications to hiring a house sitter I guess that's what we just kind of came up with it's some qualifications it ain't just putting the body in the place, right? It's always about how we do what we do, not just the fact that we did it. In the previous uh, property, the previous unit, we talked about how sometimes we'll salvage, right? What well, we can salvage from the existing and then add in what needs to be new. In this particular case, this is a situation where we couldn't, the, the flooring, the old tile that was in the kitchen just wasn't good enough, right? And so we pulled it out and then we just laid this uh, vinyl planks down all throughout the wet areas, okay? So you see it, you know, it's continuous here. Got the nice white and gray countertops, the Formica. And then we did the same thing in the bathroom. 
right? Ran the same the same tile all throughout the bathroom as well. So, you know, again, it's nothing is all or nothing. Y'all are constantly hear me saying that. You got to evaluate each unit on its own mirror and obviously have an overall budget to make sure you stand within that. But, you know, you may have to put a little bit more in one and less in another, okay? And so when you, uh, and I say all of this, I know this sounds super simplified, y'all, but you got to understand. So many investors have this all or nothing approach. And so when they bid a, when they bid a project, they don't, they don't do the, the, the due diligence of being granular and going unit by unit. They just say, we're going to do this to all of them. And that's a waste of money. That's cutting into your profit. So I know this sound oversimplified, but I'm putting italics on it because I want y'all to understand when you do these larger projects, you need to go unit by unit and really have a true scope of work for each unit and then come up to your overall number. Don't just make this sweeping um, bid that you're gonna do everything to every one of them. I've had this, uh, we, did, we can get this one back. You're not, but there ain't a lot of stuff in here. It's in that box, I'm about to take that box out. And so the only thing in here is uh, the toilet box that we gotta put the toilet up with. Okay. You know what I'm saying? As the plumber, right. you know, we just have to divert her up the water, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, this one is a little more buttoned up than, yeah. 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 So, okay. Yeah, I say we put them up here then. Yeah. Yeah, we put them up here and we leave those other three. Um, which is kind of cool because, I mean, realistically, he come out here. Yeah. He, I mean, he got access right here to the stairs. Mm -hmm. He see everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Yeah, I say we put them up here then. Okay. And I tell them that one, two, and three, like we could move tenants mm -hmm. in immediately. Mm -hmm. The only thing I did notice, I think it was in unit three, around the sink, it looked like it was just cut. The opening was cut a little bit. On the kitchen sink? On the kitchen bathroom. sink. Okay. Kitchen sink. Yeah, okay. it, was a, it was a gap in which it, it could, yeah. I'll I take a look. Okay. Back. Yeah, short of that, I mean, you know, everything else mm -hmm. look, look up to par. Rob kept saying it was a window broke. I, I couldn't remember which unit, so it was this one right here. He, I think he was talking about one that was previous. It, it depends on when he said it. He mentioned it recently. Or Rec it yeah, it was recent. Well, yeah, it probably, so it's, I, it's probably. Yeah, I would imagine I don't because everything down on the first is should. Be I told him those were straight. Fixed, so maybe he came up here and saw that. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually about to take that one into the into the shop because this was just inside, so I'm taking that with me. Got you. To put it into the shop. Okay. Yeah, I don't think in terms of those the ones that's ready to go. I mean, not unless he say different. I mean, it definitely won't last, bro. Okay. So new investors ask me all the time, and even some seasoned investors, like, should I stay in single? Should I scale up the multi? Here, here's what I can tell you. When we came into this world, we all didn't know anything. So anything that you want to learn in life, and I mean anything, you can absolutely learn. With all that being said, I say that to say, you can go from doing nothing straight into multi. Okay, many people do it. In my humble opinion, based on my own experience from starting off as single and working my way up to Motai, there was a lot of lessons I learned from flipping a bunch of houses, doing a lot of rehab that prepared me for Motai family. Now at the same time, there were some things about Motai family that I didn't know either. Okay, because although yes, it is economy of scale, it, you're doing all your rehabs under one roof, you're doing 700, 800, 900 square feet at a time, it, it conceptually it seemed easier, right? You're just doing the same thing over and over and over. But when you, when you start doing jobs to scale, you know, the low demand on the building, right? The, 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 the electrical service coming in, the, the water distribution, all of that stuff is different, okay? It's totally different than dealing with you know, a hundred amp service panel inside of a single family home, okay? I use that as an example, but my point is this, no matter where you at right now, if you wanna get to a point of doing multifamily, all you gotta do is go out and learn how to do it. It's that simple, okay? If you in single family right now, don't despise small beginners because there's technique and skill that you're learning right now that will be transferable when you make that jump. The premise to everything that I'm telling you is that you just gotta first have the desire, get the education, go out and become a practitioner, and then one day you'll also be an expert. So we now have four Section 8 tenants ready to move in, okay? And guess what? We got units ready for them. But now we gotta change 
our security mechanism, right? Remember, we left the place boarded up as we were rehabbing it. So what we're doing now is we moving a house sitter in, have them occupy one of the units, and then we're gonna take all the boards off of one side that we're gonna have the other tenants living in, okay? We'll keep the other side boarded as we work through and renovate those units. But then that way it's aesthetically appealing to have one complete side of the building that looks like everybody's is lived in, okay? So you just gotta be sensitive to being okay with being flexible and agile so that as things change throughout the course of the project that you can also change with them. Because one would say, well, I'll just wait until I finish everything and then I'll rent it out. But why do that if it's people that wanna move in on one side now and the rehab that's going on is not interrupting their quality of living or getting in the way of whatever they're doing. So why not go ahead and start cash flowing on the project intermittently while we finishing the rest of it, okay? So that's the game plan. I hope y'all enjoyed everything that you got to see, spending the day out in the field with me. Again, if y'all want me to keep doing these videos, let me know, because if not, I got a real cozy place in Florida that I normally like to hang out at, call home. All right, I'll see y'all next time.